Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the show, Brando. Welcome to the show. Today we have an F-150. Wait, 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 wait. Don't go away. One of the things we're gonna talk about in this F-150 is kind of universal, meaning that there's more and more cars that are running into problems like this one is gonna to have. Today we're gonna to talk about that specific solution. What I mean is this has a factory premium audio system, Bang & Olsen. It's a 2019. It has a factory amplifier with factory subwoofer. And we need to integrate into it because we're putting a full system in this. This is becoming more and more common. But before we get into that, let's roll the intro. I'll catch you on the other side. Today's show is brought to you by Audio Control. Making good sound great. With a full line of integration devices, signal processors, and amplifiers, they have something for every install. All their amplifiers come with their popular high level to low level section, from the basic amp to the most advanced. Their D-series amplifiers also come with their DSP processors built into them, making your installation even easier. So make sure to head over to audiocontrol.com and we'd like to thank them for being a sponsor of the show. More and more cars are coming with premium audio systems. We need to be able to integrate into those. There's a bunch of manufacturers that are making interfaces for them, these right here. And because of that, it's become one of those things where you really gotta pay attention to what you're doing. You're gonna have to do some homework. Sure, you could probably just integrate in using high level to low level if you're doing a really basic system. You are gonna run into some audio problems, meaning that things are gonna sound maybe weird because you're pulling out those factory speakers. Being able to get a preamp output out of a factory radio is ideal because we don't have to fix any of the factory nonsense. However, there's a lot of things going on from the factory, and w w what is it? How come we can't just grab into it? And we're gonna talk about that today, and we're gonna talk about finding the solutions, and we're gonna just go on a journey about putting the amplifiers in this particular F-150 and how it's done and how we do it. So where to start? Let's fold down the seat and talk about the amplifier. Depending on when you bought your Ford product, it's either gonna have a Sony system in it, or it's gonna have a BO system in it, or it's gonna have nothing in it. And each one of those is gonna be a little bit different how you're gonna interface with it. The first one, the older one, was a Sony. And it had an amp that looked very similar to this. And there's a couple different interfaces out there for it now. PAC makes one, IDATA makes one, Metro makes one. But then every few years, the manufacturer changes. And in this case, Ford was right on top of it, and they changed it. And they came out with the BO system, or Bang & Olsen and they changed the whole bus system on how you did it. This uses what's called A to B. And how you can tell the difference between the two is actually pretty simple. See this blue cable right here? What looks like a USB. And this is the bus that talks to the amplifier. So we need something that's gonna be able to read that and give us a signal output. Now you say, why don't we just go after the amplifier? Well, it's an EQ'd signal on the output of the amplifier. There's a lot of things going on. In this case, you have tweeters, they come out of the radio, all right. You have the two mids in the front door, they come out of this amp. The rear doors, they come out of the amp. The subwoofer, dual voice call, out of the amp. Center channel, out of the amp in the center. It's weird, right? Why would you use uh, power in a deck? Well, the reason why is because there was already power there and to save money, you might as well use it, right? And that brings us to the next thing. Well, what if it has a factory radio non-amplified? Well, thanks to the guys at iData, they've actually made an interface for that to reprogram the radio to give us a non-EQ'd four volt output. That non-EQ is kind of the, the rub there. We have a video that we've done it on. I'll, of course, put it in the show notes where you can go and see that one. And the reason why the non-EQ is important is you're going to have to de-EQ it if not. And if it's non-EQ'd, meaning it's perfectly flat, then it's just going to make it easier for you to add amplifiers to it. With this BO system, we now need to find an interface for it. Now, of course, I showed you all those places that we go to check. Let's head over to the laptop and see who makes the interface for this and which one we're going to go to. Now, naturally, we have our favorites, and we're going to check those first. And when it comes to coming out with interfaces for audio first, it's a company called Nav. TV. They specialize with integrating into factory systems, such as, such as backup cameras, aux jacks, anything that revolves around keeping that factory radio on the dash, they make stuff that goes into it. They've also expanded into the Zen line of products, which takes us into adding amplifiers in cars. They were the first to develop the A to B, selecting the make, the Ford, model, F-150, year, 2019, US version, select solution. 
We'll narrow it down to audio interfaces and what pops up is that A to B. This is the interface solution for this car. One thing to note about the Zen A to B is they don't always think interfacing through all the way. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you look here closely in the picture, you notice these two harnesses here. These are what's gonna plug into those factory harnesses we just saw. But what you're not gonna see is speaker wire hanging off of them. For some reason, they haven't put that together that there should be speaker wires there to retain the factory speaker wires. The nice thing is we should be able to cut the shrink wrap off and solder on our own. At least that's what we've done in the past. The reason why we're willing to go a little bit extra on this particular piece is because they use all top of the line parts when making their Zen products. These things sound really good. They have Tosh Link outputs if you want to go into a higher end DSP along with they have multiple channels of output. Now this is the one we're going to use. So once we get over to the bench, we'll really dive deep into it. But let's keep going on here. There's new products coming out all the time. So it always is a benefit to go and check to see if there's any new products that come out since the last time you did one of these. And to do that, we'll go and check iData for year 2019 select model. F-150, and as we checked right here, it says without amplifier. So right now, the only option is without amplifier, which is what we were talking about when we were in the car. Next, we wanna check metroonline.com, make model year, screw it on here where it says digital signal processor, and it doesn't open, which means that they don't have one. It means we're still working on gathering information on this vehicle. Please check back soon, it means no. Lastly, go to pack-audio.com, type in the make model and year, scroll down. Well, they have dash kits, they have have steering wheel control interfaces, speaker connection harness for the 2018-19 four vehicles with the Bang & Olds do make a T harness, the APH FDO2. This might actually be kind of cool. We might be able to use this with our nav TV piece if we don't feel like soldering all those wires onto the harness. Mm. So this harness was made for their dash kit that they make for this car. And that's one of the things that we talk about on the show a lot, that trying to find a specific harness is sometimes not the easiest thing to do. That doesn't mean the harness doesn't exist. It just means that it may exist, but in a totally another application. However, it may be helpful for us just because it's a complete harness that we can use. We'll see if we have it in stock. We've checked all the sources. We still have one manufacturer making an adapter for this. But these are the steps you have to go through. Let's take a look at that A to B piece and kind of go over it. Let's open it up and see what comes in the box. Nav TV, Zen Audio, DSP, 12A A to B kit. Instructions, A to B brain, and the harness. Something to note about these. These are made here in the US. All these harnesses are hand built. These are your RC output ends. If you notice, there's way more than just your standard six. In fact, there are 12, 12 outputs. We open this up inside. It gives us our list of all 12. You have right front, left front, one through six, right rear door, left rear door, which is seven through 10. 11 is center and 12 is subwoofer. The reasoning behind that is there is a DSP chip in here and at some point, point they were talking about making it available as a downloadable purchase so that you could just have your DSP all built into it and ready to go. On the first end you have all your outputs your digital output as well as your RCAs. On the other end USB A to B input that blue harness is going to plug into here a power light a status power light which is going to tell you what's happening with the unit the programmer USB and then the main power harness here. Looking at the main power harness there's not much to it. You have a remote output the power and ground can Connector is located here, and this purple and white are going to be your data connection. That's all there is to it. As you notice, they're all pinned here, and if you look inside of this, they're all pinned here. So we can solder on our wires onto this and make our own harness and then put shrink wrap back over it. Which I haven't decided if I want to do that yet. Looking over the instructions, they go over what we just talked about. They tell you the models that it'll work for. They explain to you how this is to be installed by removing the factory amplifier. The factory amplifier is coming out of this installation we get to use all that room they tell you the pinouts on their harness here this I suggest checking them to make sure that they are correct according to this pin one 
which is this far corner here, is the ground. That is in the right place. Above it, pin six is a constant 12 volts, which is this red wire. Next to ground and pin two is the remote turn on. If you get one of these and you go to put it in and your remote turn on isn't working and you didn't check this, that may be why. Pin five is supposed to be violet white, and it is. That's gonna be your can high, can low, pin 10 right above it is your violet. We have a good harness. It also goes back over what all 12 of those RCAs do. Tuning tips. Before beginning using the process, especially with an external DSP set base and treble on the head unit to zero, which we'll hop in and check to make sure those are off. Begin with the amplifier gain set all the way down. So they go over and give you a basic startup. The status LED. This guy right here. Solid red, A to B active only, no can present. Solid green, can active, no A to B. Green and red or yellow. A to B plus can active, normal operations. Blue, violet, white, receiving amplifier commands. Blinking red, clipping, blinking blue, connected to your PC updater. These two guys here are the breakouts for the factory side, these pins. This is gonna tell us our center channel, positive, negative, subwoofer, right so and it also gives us a wire color we don't have to do any checkings of polarities and all that do give you the information here to solder in your own wires if you choose they also give you an image of what the factory amplifier should look like that way you know it's the a to b system they talk about the blue plug they also show you what it looks like if you're going to be using your rcas or if you're just going to be using the tosh link out then there is some software that you can run on this to do certain changes in the unit it gives you what comes default and what does not if there's things you want to change. The next couple pages are gonna go through and tell you all about those. And then they give you an overview of the hardware itself, 12 channels, Output voltage peak is six volts. Output voltage normal is 2.1 volts. Signal to noise ratio is 114. Frequency response is 18 to 24,000. The DAC it's using is a 48 kilohertz 32 bit DAC. The DSP is a 32 bit floating point DSP. I know what you're thinking. Wait a minute. You said you'd have to turn the DSP function on. It needs DSP for just the general operation. And why it needs that is because your truck car is going to have backup sensors, lane departure warnings, and all these other things that need to make sure they go to the right place in the car. The DSP that's built into this is designed to do that. Without it, things wouldn't be where they need to be. It's not just for doing tuning and time alignment and all that. Current consumption on standby is less than a milliamp, which is important because you don't want this drawing a bunch of current when the car is off and draining your battery. Now, since we're talking about current draw, when integrating into a factory radio factory system. The remote turn on doesn't work like aftermarket. Aftermarket, you turn off the radio, the remote turn on shuts off, the amplifier shut off. Factory, not so much. When you turn the car off, that doesn't turn off the remote turn on. It just tells the system that the radio is gonna start the power down process now. If the doors all close and everything shuts off, it'll go, okay, I'll start the power down process. It can take up to three minutes for these things to go to sleep. On the flip side, if you hit unlock, it starts the power up sequence. If you were to walk away from the car, you come back, you open your door and you look at your amp, you're like, hey, my amps are on. Yes, they're on, but it's because you woke them up. It will go into standby sleep mode, just take some time for it to do that, as well as it'll wake up immediately. For this system, there will be no need for us to remove the factory radio. That's kind of cool, right? We're upgrading the system without removing the factory radio. A lot of the times when you do these amplifier integration upgrades, you don't have to remove the factory radio. Some you do, some you don't. It just depends what you're doing and how the data gets from one point to the other. So pay attention to that. Don't start taking the car apart until you find out where your interface harness has to go. For example, a lot of the times the pack interfaces go behind the radio because you're retaining the factory amplifier. iData, typically goes at the amplifier. Zen, there again, depends. Sometimes you have to retain the factory amplifier, such as a GM, and other times you don't, such as a Ford. Read the instructions to find out what actually needs to come apart. In this case, because the tweeter wires are located behind the radio and we're gonna be replacing them with new ones, 
It's a little bit easier just for us to run new tweeter wires back instead of having to cut into the factory harness because we're not tying in there. That means there is no harness going behind the radio for us to grab the wires from. In the Ford Explorers, it works the same way, just in case you were wondering. So we have all the information that we need right now to get started on this. We know this amplifier needs to come out. We gotta get rid of this factory subwoofer. We need this room here to mount our amplifiers. Tip, when doing one of these Bang & Olsen systems, unlike the non-premium version, this thing on the seat right here, about this inch by four inch thing, it does fold in and takes up room. Try to move the amplifiers as far that way as possible so that this doesn't hit into them. To get this amplifier out, we're gonna need a Torx and a 10 millimeter. We can also unplug it now. The Torx is for the two top screws here, 10 millimeters for down on the bottom. We may also need a 12 too. The harness for the BO also connects into this harness here. This one is totally separate. It clips into the seat. You're gonna wanna remove this clip. We need to do some prettying up of these wires. We're gonna remove this whole side panel here along with this floorboard. We have wires to run, but we need to get these specific things off because we need to get to these wires. We need to clean up this harness a little bit to do better wire management. Ford just uses the standard fuzzy Tessa tape for their wiring. We have some, we'll do the same. Pro tip, when cutting this stuff, have a fresh, sharp blade. This tape can act like the softest butter to cut or hard as a rock, it's really weird. When taping it back up, break it into its dedicated pieces. One of the reasons why we wanted to do this is we needed to get this blue wire apart and out so that we can plug it in to a little bit farther away than they give you access to from the factory. The first one to start with is that one that was attached to the seat. We want that one all by its lonesome. Untangle these as much as you can. They don't do a really good job at that. The harnesses just kind of all like group in and run through each other, which could be expected when you have, you know, 100 wires. When taping up the speaker plug, don't go all the way to the end. Leave about an inch and a quarter so that you can see what color is what on here. So when you're soldering in, you know where they're at and you're soldering into the right ones. Our wires are now separated into their own groups. This is the one that has to plug into. These two have plugs that have length to them. We wanted to make sure we got this one as far out of the bundle as possible. Also, the one here that plugs into the seat is all taped up on its own. The zip tie went back in, so it's all clipped in. Mm -hmm. 